Welcome to the Bada Boom Podcast. I'm Chris. On today's episode, Troy and I are going to talk about Suicide Squad Isekai. So Troy, what did you think? I was a little hesitant as I was starting to watch the first episode just because, you know, it's a it's a new telling of a semi-familiar story when it comes to the Suicide Squad. You know, a new world and, you know, Amanda What's really Waller. funny about that, you know, sorry to interrupt, is that <laughs> literally it's the same story every time, which makes you think about like how badly they messed up one with the video game and then yeah. two with the 2016 movie because you're like hey like this is a very simple concept like group of people together they get sent to on a suicide mission oh they have to work together use their powers and that's the end of it when you complicate it with a live service in the case of the game or in the movie's case you know reshoot it based on the response to another movie that's how you get, you know, the bad versions. The good versions, um, to skip to my thoughts on it, was <laughs> these first three episodes are great. And then also, if you look at something like The Suicide Squad by James Gunn, that was also great. But also the same story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think they got a lot of things right with it, actually. Like after the first episode and like kind of these many introductions to the characters after that when you really got to see the characters interact with each other i was like okay you got this stuff right and the thing that i was the most happy about when it comes to getting a character right was peacemaker i was on the fence of like do i want this to be like a john cena kind of character or do we want this to be someone that's like very very serious the entire time and I'm really happy with how they took him into being like, he's tough, but he's not dumb, but he doesn't like let his, his morals are really what's make making him make some kind of dumb choices, but he himself doesn't come off as being dumb. And the fact that he's like, you know, very precise about like the time with the bombs in their neck, but it doesn't come off as being like over the top. I was like, okay, I like Peacemaker. I can get more invested because I feel like he's going to make a big turn or betrayal. Oh, like that's anything new. <laughs> but uh, it, it makes me feel a bit more invested in the character. And I think all the other characters too, like they got right, like Deadshot's not over the top. He's making friends of everybody, or at least he thinks he is. King Shark is King Shark. Who can hate that? Uh, I also think Clayface was a great uh character to bring in because we haven't had them in a suicide squad movie had them in the harley quinn animated series and I, they took like the the acting the acting aspects from that but like overall like i feel like the characters feel a bit more fresh in this story and it's making me want to watch more and more of it as these episodes come out yeah, these first three episodes were, were really great. And, you know, it's a very, like, basic Suicide Squad setup. Hey, Amanda Waller has kind of fucked up. She sent a team that has failed to do what she asked. So now she's sending a second team. But it could be that she always planned to send a second team, like in the Suicide Squad movie. Yeah. And, you know, even the Assault on Arkham animated movie, which was really great. Um, a lot of these elements, it's like, hey, like you just need the simple aspect. So in this, Amanda Waller, I think, you know, it's not revealed. She uses a meta human who I think is enchantress to open a doorway yeah. into another world um, where, you know, obviously, you know, she works for the government. So they're trying to see if they can monopolize resources like water, oil and all those things. Um, and it's more of like a kind of like fairy tale fantasy land where like orcs and princesses and, and queens and magic all exist, um, which is really like strange to set the Suicide Squad in. But what I really find great about it is that because it's made by Warner Brothers Japan and stuff like the anime sort of aspect of it is really authentic and not like mm. it's trying to to be that or you know and i was kind of thinking it would be a little bit like um batman ninja which is a couple years ago um and stuff and you know we talked about it i thought it was a movie um so the fact that like it's it's a full on like anime series is is great because you know you're able to develop these characters and have these like really cool moments so 
throughout the first three episodes, you have these character moments. You see Harley and Joker, that dynamic. You see Deadshot when he's in jail with Ratcatcher, and you kind of get a sense of like, oh, Deadshot's kind of like oblivious. He's so confident in himself, he doesn't realize people don't like him. Um, and then you have Peacemaker, who you know he has aspects of the the Cena character, but is a lot more sort of like focused. You know, he isn't. Yeah, yeah. He he kind of is a fool because he like the first hat, like literally the first two or three episodes until they get their costumes. He's wearing like a bag over his head, and he looks like Jason before he got the hockey mask. Um, so <laughs> that was really interesting. But you know, his goal is peace, and he's like, "Hey, if you get in that way." Um, Rick Flag was cool. Um, you know, obviously they gave him like a cool, like handsome haircut, so he looks like you know the typical like anime protagonist. So I like those aspects of it where it really used sort of the the medium to sort of like, hey, like this is obviously situations and characters, you know, but we're going to put it in a new sort of light by using sort of anime, this type of animation and type of storytelling to move it forward. So for me, even though all the aspects of it are really familiar, I really enjoyed those first three episodes from the humor, action and execution standpoint. Yeah. And I think even though we've seen all these characters in the two other live action suicide squad movies, I'm still really interested in seeing how these characters are used in this animated series because like we we don't necessarily see all these characters either sometimes in in comic books or uh in any of the other mediums as much so to see how we're going to have like the, the episode of rack catcher like was great and he's still out there in the world. So it's like, okay, what's going to happen next? And we don't know what's going to happen with the thinker or killer croc, or if other people from earth are going to come back over into this realm. Like there's or a where lot of Katana is, um, is, yeah. is you know, like also w- one thing I thought was really cool that they added was now that they're in this world is that they all have heightened abilities. Like exactly. Clay place is able to interact with clay amongst the world. Um, Harley, when she uses a weapon like her bat or some of the mallets, um, she has more powers. So it kind of like adds a little bit hyper like realism. So it's cool that they're in this fantasy world because they've all been given powers. Um, we still haven't seen what Deadshot and uh, Peacemaker can do, but they're kind of already like really skilled. Like Peacemaker almost like has like super strength even before it's revealed what his powers are. And then also King Shark is just King Shark and it's going to eat everything. Yeah, and I'm hoping for a Killer Croc King Shark showdown. I think that'll be uh, really interesting to see how that plays out. But again, like the first three episodes was definitely worth like binge watching because there's like the first episode, like I said, it was kind of hard to kind of get into uh, at first. They don't just suit be- up to the third one. <laughs> so well, you kind of have not- to watch all three. Yeah, not necessarily like the suit up aspects, but it was just like, you know, the Joker piano car. I was like, I can't tell if if this is like a fun twist or if this is like, or if I just don't like it. (laughs) But once they were in the world and they're like, oh, we're, you know, there's other characters and like other unknowns of what could happen uh, and like a little bit more action. I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm into this. Uh, you know, and the only thing that was kind of keeping me there uh, up until that was uh, Amanda Waller. Her theme song is totally, and her outro is totally not what anybody asked for or wanted. But at the same time, it's like <laughs> it is. But it's great, you know. It's it's some of my it's it's kind of like the Peacemaker intro where you're like, wait, I did not expect this at all. It's hilarious, and now um, now you forced me to watch the the <laughs> yeah. The it, outro like, that's every something time. I would expect from the the animated Catwoman kind of movie that was kind of drawn in like a similar style as this like if they did something like yeah. that I'd be like that on point for that character and that's where it goes but it's going back to the point of like it being authentic like you know you see the design of the Joker and the makeup and you're like oh my god this is like you know it's trying to be edgy and stuff like that and then when you see the the Joker mobile have that piano and stuff you're like <laughs> this is cool 
like they're just having fun making this and like in the most ridiculous way possible. And I think that's why it's really important that they use, you know, WB Japan and sort of it's clear that it's, you know, a different sort of take on these characters. Yes, the situation, the the overall situation is very similar, but there are different like Clayface. Yeah, the actor aspect of it is there, but like, hey, he's handsome all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and he thinks he's more popular than he is. And Deadshot is more sort of like he's not serious. He's kind of like a dick. And, you know, uh, and then Rick Flag is obviously Rick Flag, but it is interesting to see like, hey, he gets captured, he helps them, and then he gets captured again. <laughs> so he's kind of like the damsel in distress <laughs> of the Suicide Squad. I, I really like that. I mean, I don't know how many episodes are in in this uh, season if there's going to be multiple seasons but for me watching these three i'm um, i'm wholly invested and i can't wait for them yeah i can't wait for it either and i was gonna say one thing that i've really enjoyed about them going to a different world which by the way i just looked it up there's going to be 10 episodes which doesn't feel like it's going to be enough to do what i feel like the show could do i mean i feel like 10 is enough for, for me in the three I, like they've even struck like i said they don't suit up for three episodes and like it's hard to stretch this story really far. Like, hey, like they have a mission. They yeah. only have at this point in the third episode, I think they only have 50, less than 50 hours until they have to get back to the gate. That's um, true. So that their bomb doesn't go off. So like, honestly, the Suicide Squad, I don't think that concept could really hold a 20 episode season of anything just because if it's one mission and also they have bombs in their head usually it's on a time so the pace kind of has to be like really fast yeah i think the thing that's really tied this show together at the moment though is that the like we said earlier oh it's the same plot of like they go into a different world or or something like that but one thing that's really made that is that aspect of the plot work really well is because they're in a completely different world. They're they're not looking over their shoulders for for Batman or other the any of the other superheroes, and they're kind of given the opportunity to cut loose and be themselves and not worry too much about stuff. Uh, even though, yeah, they've got the bombs in the back of their neck, but like when they take over the prison and they're just having a good time, it's like they're enjoying themselves so much in the fact that they own the prison and they're now like best friends with the the ogres that they just beat up a couple minutes ago and i think like those little moments are going to be fun to see uh because you get to really have a better connection with these characters as opposed from like oh they're on the run they're doing some action stuff like you get to have those moments of uh feeling like oh i've done that before or you just get to have a good time with your friends and you're having a good time watching the show so you feel like you're a little bit in that moment with them but yeah hopefully uh you know 10 episodes we're already three down lots of potentially happen uh we've got a couple of characters that we haven't even seen but they're on the roster list uh so we'll have to see what happens and where these characters come in and if they can make it to the gate in time yeah and what did you guys think? Let us know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe. And with that, bada boom. Bada boom. Thank you for listening to the Bada Boom podcast. Keep the conversation going with Chris and I on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. You can find us on all these places at, at Bada Boom Podcast. Get into the comments on our YouTube channel. Let us know what you like about the show or what you'd like to hear from us in the future. Until next time, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Thanks for listening.